Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to use the law of conservation of energy equation, which you see on the screen, to solve a problem involving a spring gun. This is the first video that has a uh, problem involving a spring. And since we're new to springs, we're gonna just back up and do a just a plain old spring problem that does not require the law of conservation of energy. So here you can see that we're given a force. Okay, so it is important to distinguish between PES, which is equal to one half K delta X squared and FS, which is equal to minus K delta X. Okay, force has units of Newtons, spring potential energy has units of joules just like any other type of energy. All right, and so in this case, we can think about um, a wall here, which has a spring attached to it. And there is a force being exerted on the spring. So there's the external force. And then the force that the spring is exerting is in this direction, that's Fs. We'll call to the right our positive x direction. So Fs equals minus k delta x. And so Fs is 1,000 newtons. That's equal to minus k times, and we think about this um, 0 0.02 meters, which is two centimeters, this delta x. The spring was originally shorter than this, maybe you know, say about right here, and then it got pulled to the left, so its displacement is actually negative 0 0.02 meters. And so then the negative sign and the negative sign become a plus sign, and then we get a k value of 50,000. And the units are newtons per meter. The newtons here, we divide both sides by 0 0.02, and so we get a rather large spring constant, 50,000 newtons per meter. The larger the value of k, the stiffer the spring. All right, now we'll look into how much potential energy is stored in this stretch spring, and this is quite simple at this point. Like I said, the main trick to this problem is realizing that uh, spring potential energy and spring force are not the same, and so it's simply a matter of plugging in these values, our newly found spring constant. Keep in mind that that is a property of the spring, and not all springs are created equal. Every spring has its own spring constant. And then 0 0.02 meters squared. And you could say, hey, what about that negative sign? That's fine if you feel compelled, but it really doesn't matter. When we're finding the energy, you can see it doesn't matter because we're squaring it. So negative 0 0.02 times negative 0 0.02 is still going to be positive. So it really doesn't matter in the energy equation. And then this comes out to be 10 joules. Okay. All right, now let's go on to that other uh, problem here, example 14. A spring gun is able to launch a marble to a certain height, and we're supposed to figure out um, what the spring constant is. And so we have a spring gun here, and that's when the, the spring is compressed. Okay, so that's what the spring looks like normally, but it's been compressed, and we've got the marble sitting there. That's our initial state, and then goes up 22 meters, that's pretty remarkable. That's like 70 feet approximately. So HF equals 22 meters, 
V sub F is zero because it's at the peak. And at this point, the spring isn't compressed at all. Down here at the initial, the spring is compressed by eight centimeters or 0 0.08 meters. And the velocity is zero and our height we can also say is zero because we get to pick that. So we'll say that this is where our PEG equals zero line is. So we'll make that zero. And so now we know everything about the final state and everything about the initial state. And so we can go through no gravitational potential energy at the beginning. because We defined it to be that way. The spring energy is there. Does not have any kinetic energy. Oh, does not have any kinetic energy because it's not moving at the beginning. Work by non-conservative forces. Hmm. Well, we need to draw a free body diagram. And there's actually two free body diagrams that we could draw. For the first part of the motion, there is a spring force and the weight. And then the ball leaves the spring. And then there's just the weight. However, during no point does it experience any non-conservative forces. And so therefore, the work by non-conservative forces is zero. Again, I had to draw two free body diagrams because I need to analyze the entire time from when it is at its initial state to when it's at its final state. So for this first bit of motion, the free body diagram is going to look like this one on the left. And then for the second bit of motion from here up to the peak, the free body diagram looks like this because the object is in free fall. Again, all conservative forces, so that makes this work by non-conservative forces be zero. It does have some gravitational potential energy at the peak. It is no longer compressing or stretching a spring, and it has momentarily come to rest. And so now we can fill in here. We've got one half K delta Xi squared equals M G H F. And we cannot divide through the mass because there's no mass in this term. And we are supposed to be finding the spring constant K. And so K equals two MGHF over delta XI squared. And so then we can solve two times 0 0.007 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 22 meters all divided by 0 0.08 meters squared. So turns out that our K value in this case is about to 472, 472. The units, we have kilogram meter per second squared just from these two, that's Newtons. And we have meters, so we have Newton meters per meter squared. So Newton meter, Per meter squared. However, we can cancel one of the meters and then that leaves us just with units of newtons per meter. Okay. Very simple energy bar chart. It has spring potential energy at the beginning, however much we want to say, and everything is zero except for its gravitational potential energy at the end. And so the first total of the first four terms has to equal the total of the last three terms. And I apologize for this extraneous line. All right, now moving on to another problem involving a spring. We have a 10 kilogram pumpkin here. Let's just go try a different color. Let's try purple this time. So we've got a pumpkin here and it's released at point A, slides down the frictionless track, strikes a spring and compresses at a certain distance x and momentarily comes to rest. We're supposed to find x. So initial is right here. So that's our initial state. We can say h initial equals three 3.0 meters. 
Now that's assuming that we pick right here to be our PE G equals zero line, which makes sense because final is going to be down here. Our delta XI is equal to zero. It's not compressing the spring at all when the pumpkin's up here. And it says it was released from rest. So that means the initial velocity is zero. Final velocity is also zero. Because it says compresses it a maximum distance. It even says momentarily coming to rest. But even if you're just, um, the other, the other way these problems sometimes get stated is it says at maximum compression, uh, find x. We also know that the height final is equal to zero. And we know that delta x is some value, delta x f rather is some value that we don't know. All right, so the initial height is something. It has gravitational potential energy. It's not compressing a spring at the beginning. It is not moving at the beginning, ah, work by non-conservative forces. So we'll recall back in example 12 in a prior video when the uh, normal force um, keeps changing direction because you're on a curve, it can be a little tricky to think about, but the normal force, whatever direction it is, is always perpendicular to the displacement. And so that's always a 90 degree angle. So the uh, normal force doesn't do any work on it. Gravity is a conservative force. The spring force is a conservative force. That only acts on it for a short time, but that's still important. It does act on it during the time period I'm interested in, but in the end, no work by non-conservative forces. At the end, it's not at a height above this dashed line, and it is compressing the spring, and it's not moving. And so this becomes a case where we can say M G h i equals one half k delta x f squared. And we're trying to find delta x. Now they call it x here. That's just how much the spring is compressed. Our equation says delta x. That's fine. Either way, we're finding that value. So delta x f equals two MGHI divided by K. And since this was squared, take the square root. Now I'm taking liberties and doing a lot of algebra at once, partially because of the amount of space that I have available and to make these videos so they're not quite so long. And also with the assumption by this point in the course, you have come to terms with your algebra skills. It, possibly will take you a lot more space to get from here to here. You might have to show it in several steps, and I encourage you to do that. Uh, however, you do need to be able to convert, or not convert, but to do the algebraic steps to get from here to here. Again, use as much room as you need, and feel free to contact me and ask me for if you have questions. Um, those of you that are in my class, that is. And, um, here you should get a delta x value of 0 0.511 meters. So about half a meter. That's well, kind of a, must be a rather long spring. All right, energy bar chart, easy. We've got gravitational potential energy at the beginning. And we have spring potential energy at the end. It was rather a mirror image of the last problem we did. There we go. And the total of these first four terms has to equal the total of these last three terms per our conservation of mechanical energy equation here. All right. And we have a follow on to that problem, which we'll go ahead and wrap it up right here. Non-conservative forces such as friction air resistance are act on the, acting on the pumpkin and the spring is only compressed by 41 centimeters. Now what is the work done by these forces? So we're going to be trying to find that value. Again, this is our initial, this is our final, 
And so it's not compressing the spring at the beginning. It's not moving at the beginning. It is at a height that goes right where our gravitational potential energy equals zero line is at the end. There is some spring potential energy and it's not moving at the end. So we simply get mg hi plus work by non-conservative forces equals one half k delta xi delta xf rather squared. And so then we find the work by non-conservative forces and it comes out to negative 105 joules. And I'll leave that as an algebraic exercise for you. Or if you're in my class, you can see the solutions posted online for a little bit more detail on that. Energy bar chart starts off with only gravitational potential energy, has no spring energy. There is some work by non-conservative forces, which is negative, which I'll come back to. But it ends up, it doesn't have any kinetic ener energy or gravitational potential energy. It has some spring energy. And so we draw that sum and we look, it has less spring energy than it did the last time. The last time it was compressing the spring by about half a meter, 0.511 meters. Now we're only compressing the spring by 41 centimeters, so it doesn't have as much spring potential energy, but it has come to a stop. And the reason it comes to a stop sooner is because there was some work done by non-conservative forces. And if we look, that work is negative. Okay, so this, um, some value, some positive value, and then this negative value. So this plus that negative value adds up to this positive value. Okay, so we've done a number of different examples through these several videos that I've done. And now you should be able to conquer any conservation of mechanical energy problem that you see. And if you have any problems, um, just go back to basics. And if you're one of my students, feel free to give me an email or a phone call and I'll work you through, help you work through it.